Starship, SpaceX's Mars-bound rocket is slated to receive a significant upgrade as the Raptor engines undergo a redesign, which promises to usher in a monumental shift. Indeed, it is a significant increase in power to become the world's most powerful engine ever created. That's right, SpaceX's new Raptor 3 has stunned the whole rocket business. How does the Raptor 3 compare to other engines, and how will this upgrade affect SpaceX's future? Before we continue, please smash the like button, share, and comment on this video. Subscribe to the channel and put the notification bell on so you don't miss our next video. Elon Musk, CEO of SpaceX, has had Mars goals since the company's inception in 2002, initiating a stepwise process that began with unscrewed flights of the small Falcon 1 before progressing to commercial missions with a larger Falcon 9 followed by crewed flights to near-Earth space and heavy-lift missions of the Falcon Heavy, including a precursor mission to Mars, a huge launch vehicle with a cluster of high-powered engines, a deep space propulsion system, and a propulsive landing and ascent architecture for operation in the Martian atmosphere are required to achieve this lofty aim. All of this will be made possible by the SpaceX Raptor engine family, which is made of SpaceX's proprietary SX-500 alloy, comprising copper, aluminum, and steel alloys. Raptor engines are full-flow stages, combustion cycle engine that runs on liquid oxygen and liquid methane, both of which will power SpaceX's next-gen generation spacecraft Starship, while in a cryogenic condition. The Raptor engine itself benefits from very favorable FFSC, or full-flow staged combustion cycle technologies, which maximize the specific impulse generated by a given amount of propellant, and although being the third FFSC engine ever designed, it will be the first to leave the test stand. One of the Raptor's most outstanding features is its gimbal range, which means the engine can gimbal 15 degrees in the Y and Z axis, which is required for the flip and burn landing. To put it simply, the Starship wants to do a gimbal range of 15 degrees. Even I understand that the RS-25 has a gaming ring range of 12 and a half degrees, whereas SpaceX's Merlin, which powers the Falcon series of SpaceX rockets, only gimbals to 5 degrees. Raptor 1, on the other hand, has been developed over the years in the initial stage. It's an older, outmoded design. Its construction was complex, difficult to produce, and it had a long turnaround between launches. It also reached a thrust ceiling of 185 tons, implying that it would fall to meet the majority of demand for a Mars-bound Starship. Raptor 2 was developed as a remedy, however, after the first Starship orbital trip. Raptor 2 appears to be insufficient. To be clear, Raptor 3 must be shown just three weeks after that. Raptor 3 isn't simply an enhanced version of Raptor 1 or 2, but also a more powerful rocket engine. In general, it reached 350 bar of pressure and 269 tons of force. The higher the chamber pressure, the more thrust and potential efficiency. Higher chamber pressures will be achieved by the engine. Allowing an engine to be smaller for a given thrust level enhances its thrust-to-weight ratio. So, in comparison to the predecessor, Raptor version 1 produced 185 tons of thrust, whereas the current V2 produces approximately 230 tons of push. Although the Raptor V2 only achieved roughly 300 bars of pressure, this is a nearly 17% improvement. In another instance, the best Russian engine, the RD-180, has two combustion chambers and two nozzles and produces 386 tons of sea level thrust. In other words, the Russian engine can be thought of as a single engine with two combustion chambers or as two S2 engines sharing a single turbo pump. So imagine two Raptor 3 engines fitting in the space of one RD-180, producing significantly more thrust than its nearest equivalent engine. That is the origin of the color blue before it will be capable of producing up to 240 tons of force. When SpaceX placed the Raptor 3 on the launch vehicle Starship Super Heavy rocket, it used an efficient, albeit slightly less so, combustion cycle and relied on the same methane and oxygen propellant. The Saturn V rocket generated 34.5 million newtons or 7.6 million pounds of thrust, for a total thrust of 8,877 tons or 19.5 million pounds. The thrust of the Starship Super Heavy booster with Raptor 3s would be 2.56 times that of the Saturn V. So far, Saturn V is no longer in service. Instead, NASA developed a new rocket dubbed the Space Launch System SIS, which has a max thrust of 8.8 .8 million pounds. According to NASA, the operating rocket was more powerful than any rocket ever built. That's when it took off, in the month of November 2022. With its capability at liftoff, the SpaceX Starship is predicted to dethrone the SLS as soon as it reaches orbit. Officials at SpaceX have stated that they have more engines than they can fly right now. Do you believe SpaceX will be able to launch the Raptor 3 engine by the end of the year? Let us know in the comments section below. Finally, how do all of these Raptor 3 changes add up to higher power? This will allow any Raptor 3 equipped spacecraft to have a much larger payload. Yet owing to Raptor 3 simplicity, Musk stated it can be relaunched within an hour, as opposed to Raptor 1, which took several weeks in between launches. Because of its simplicity, the Raptor 3 is half the price. 
This engine is revolutionary, and it cost as much to build as the previous Raptor. It's a massive understatement. The Raptor 3 will have a massive impact. Consider Musk's ultimate goal, Mars colonization. A small fleet of Raptor 3 equipped starships may launch multiple times each week thanks to the Raptor 2's speedy turnaround. This means that SpaceX might launch more payloads into orbit a single year than the United States has its entire history. Musk thinks that a total of 1 million tons of cargo are required only to set up a self-sustaining Mars colony. In principle, Raptor 3 equipped starships could deliver as much to Mars, as a huge increase in annual payload capacity is what would allow SpaceX to colonize Mars. That means it would only require a little over a thousand Raptor 3 equipped starships working continuously for a decade to colonize Mars in just 10 years, with roughly 20 launches a week. It will be extremely expensive, as you might expect, but the Raptor 3 excels in that regard. A Raptor 3 equipped starship is anticipated to cost only $2 million per launch. Compare that to NASA's SLS rocket, which has a 15% less payload than Starship and costs between $1.55 billion and over $2 billion every launch. Musk's hypothetical 10 years Mars colonization project will cost $2.08 billion a year, which is the same as one SLS launch. To put it another way, Starship is 1,040 times cheaper than the SLS, but as a reminder, the SLS is no slouch. It is a cutting-edge rocket designed by the best minds at NASA. It's simply that the Starship and Raptor 2 are only in another league. Starship could actually access the Moon, Mars, and the asteroid belt for further human exploration and colonization. Starship, with such a great payload, a low launch cost, and a rapid turnaround time, might have significant impact on Earth, as the Raptor 3 can flee. In theory, the carbon-neutral biofuel Starship might be the world's first net-zero rocket. Combine that with its amazing landing capability and a payload of over 150 tons in low Earth orbit, and you have a prospective alternative for a commercial jet plane. A Starship would take 29 minutes to go from London to New York, which is only treble the price of a standard first-class ticket per person. With Raptor 1's significant turnaround time, this service would be impracticable, but with a Raptor 3 equipped Starship fleet, it could quickly shuttle passengers to and from without massive delay. So, thanks to the Raptor 3, SpaceX may be able to revolutionize aviation as well. That about sums up today's episode. Don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments area below. Your support drives us to make more excellent videos, and we appreciate you. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you click down below and leave me a comment about which supercar you prefer to have. Thanks for watching.